guys and gals, it's your boy Lucifer here. Um, in this video, I'm going to be uh, showing you my method of uh, installing the uh, Clark Pads Gen 3 for V11 pads onto my new Inmotion V11. And uh, these go for about 150 bucks. A little pricey, but... Um, well, I guess we'll see if uh, they're worth the price, huh? Uh, I also have the uh, the official in motion pads, but I haven't even tried those yet. I wanted to try these first. So, anyway, uh, the method that I have done so far is uh, these top two screws on the uh, sand saddle housing. You'll want to take those off. And uh, what I did was I put those in the little bag that came with the uh, Gen 2 Clark pads or Gen 3 Clark pads. Uh, they sent a little bit of uh, hardware. So I took the, uh, the regular screws out of the saddle and I just used that same bag to keep them. Because you want to hang on to those, put them in a safe place where they won't get lost. And, uh, you know, just in case you need to swap that out and put the original screws back in. So, that little bag comes in handy for that. So anyway, took those screws off. And what I did was I used the, the hardware that came with the uh, Clark pads and screwed those in, uh, you know, just to keep it on there uh, temporarily. Now, you'll see that the backing for the, um, the adhesive backing, the um, paper, is still there. You'll want to keep that on, or at least I did. Anyway, temporarily put those screws in there and uh, kind of just to kind of size it out you know to see where your your foot placement is going to be and it might be a little bit awkward you know you'll probably want to find a piece of furniture or a wall or something to you know uh, support yourself and get up on the pedal and see how your foot how your foot is usually placed and, like with me, I usually hang my, my toes over the uh, front of the pedal a bit. So uh, that's where I want my foot. And, you know, those screws that you put into the pads, they're not tightened down all the way, but, you know, just enough to keep it in place while you're, uh, you know, uh, doing this temporary sizing thing for placement. So I kind of wiggled it. Uh, a little bit, just a little bit. Anyway, uh, you know, wiggled pagging into place to um, allow for um, my foot to slip under that front knot there, that front knob. That way, if I hit a bump, hit a jump, there's not a whole lot of uh, uh, space between my my shoe, the top of my shoe, and that knob there. But Still, enough of, of a little bit of a space to slip my foot out easily and, you know, so I don't get too caught up in it. You know what I mean? Anyway, so once you have your, uh, uh, the height from the top of your foot to the bottom of that knob, you know, about right, you'll want to, like I said, uh, use a piece of furniture or a wall and get, actually get all the way up on the pedals and see how you know how the uh, the shin and uh, calf how far away that is from the front and back of the pad you know for for thrusting and then stopping and uh you might want to need to, you might need to uh you know tilt that a little bit forward or backward to to your liking anyway when when you have that all mapped out <laughs> Uh, you might want to use, like, say, a piece of um, masking tape or something that can be easily removed. And uh, 
you know, just kind of put a, put a little line to kind of guide you when, cause you're going to have to take this off again. Little line, you know, where that placement is. And, uh, that'll kind of give you an idea, a little guide when you put that pad back on. Anyway, took the screws out. Flip around here. Took the screws back out and started placing the uh, Velcro on the wheel itself. And this is the soft side, the uh, the hoop side, not the uh, prickly hook side. The soft side uh, you want to put on the wheel. And I just cut it to uh, roughly the, the size of just above the screw holes to the bottom of the curved portion of the saddle. In other words, all the flat surface from the screws up to the where the, the curved portion of the saddle starts. And you'll see there's a like a little seam just above this reflective sticker that's on there that says in motion. And uh, so I cut it, cut the Velcro uh, more or less to that size. And then I used an X-Acto knife to go right along that seam and cut off the excess. I know it. You know, you're probably never going to see that anyway if the pads are on there, but I'm kind of particular, a little OCD, so I, you know, try to make it as neat looking as possible just in case I uh, end up going without pads. You know, it's not just kind of scraggly and hanging out there, you know what I mean? Anyway. Now, for the hook side, the prickly side, I, uh, you know, Measured it to a, approximately the same length as what what I put on the wheel, and I put a couple of strips there, and um, uh, didn't take off the backing at first. I put put the strips side by side, uh, roughly you know where the uh, where that's going to be placed on the wheel, and placed them right there, and then used an exacto knife to cut around that portion and cut not too deep because you're only cutting through this paper here, this uh, adhesive backing paper. And I carefully peeled that off and then peeled the backing of the, uh, the Velcro off and I'm putting in on that uh, exposed space there. You know, the backing uh, has the adhesive on it now that the, the paper is gone. And it's fusing with the uh, hook sided side of the Velcro strip. Okay, I got my other strip right here. And putting it right in that exposed adhesive area. And the reason for doing this is by leaving the, the paper on the other parts, um, you don't want to rip the whole thing off because some of it's not going to be sticking to the actual wheel. And you don't want to get a bunch of dirt and and stuff and grime in there just sticking to that uh, adhesive back of the pad itself. So leaving the paper on there will prevent that. And the only part of, the only part that you should cut out is more or less the size of the Velcro that you're actually sticking to it. Now when when putting, actually placing the, uh, the pads back on your wheel again, of course, some of you might have that little piece of uh, masking tape or a little mark there to, to show where you had the bottom of the pad before. Anyway, you want to put the, uh, the screws in, but not tighten them down very much at all. Just enough to get the threads into the... Uh, into the holes on the side, you know, the sides on, uh, on the saddle there. Just enough to get it in there. 
because you're going to need that uh, that space to adjust your pads a little bit. And with the Velcro on there, that's not going to that's going to be not going to be such an easy thing. Uh, that's why you want to leave the screws uh, fairly loose and just enough. Like I said, just enough uh, uh, tightness to actually get them into the hole, fed into the hole and uh, onto the threads of the screw. See, just a couple of turns there. And now you kind of pull up to keep the uh, Velcro from sticking there and uh you know make your little adjustments there and what i had mine was this screw all the way to the bottom of this uh hole on the pad and just a little bit tipped backwards and then press it down And then again, then go ahead and, and uh, tighten the screws all the way down, of course. Because what you're going to want to do is uh, get them, get both the pads on, and actually take it for a test drive. Make sure that the uh, pads are exactly to your liking, and it may take a few times, it may take a few adjustments, but uh, you want them. You want them pretty tight. You don't want to leave these uh, these screws loose or um, the Velcro unstuck while you do your your uh, test rides because it's just going to be flopping around all over the place and uh, you know uh, not going to be good for anything now, is it? So yeah, you're going to be uh, making a few adjustments before you get it just perfect. But uh, in the end, there you go. Screws are nice and tight. Velcro is all stuck down. Ring a ding ding. All right, then you want to basically do the exact same thing to the other side. And I'm going to set these up placed pretty much exactly the way I had it on the other side with the hole all the way to the bottom of that second slit there. Oh, and when I said uh, use masking tape to um, mark your places, I actually should have said duct tape because mask masking tape doesn't really stick very well uh, to either the pads or the uh, to the wheel itself, that plastic. So you want something a little more heavy duty, a little more uh, adhesive than uh, masking tape. So I'm gonna use some of this uh, heavy duty duct tape, Gorilla brand. And what I'm doing here is I got my holes lined up properly where I want them. There we go. And what I'm doing is eyeballing that uh, saddle beam that goes straight up like that. I'm gonna eyeball it right up to the top of the pad and put a piece of tape on the pad itself, on the back, on each side. It goes up like that to about there. Sure, it's not perfect, but the reason I do this is when I cut out the paper off of the back, I can see uh, roughly how to place those uh, strips of, of Velcro right in there like that. See? Put that aside. And get my strips of Velcro. And this is heavy duty industrial Velcro. And uh, depends on who you ask as to what brand, but 
I'm using the actual Velcro brand Velcro industrial strength. And there's other brands that other riders might recommend, but this is what I got. This is what I'm using. And I'm measuring from the from the screw holes to just above that reflective decal that has the Emotion logo on it. Right up there to right there. I'm doing that twice. And remember, this is the soft, the soft side, the uh, the loop side, not the hook side. And just to the flat part of the bevel on that beam there, and that side there. And I'm going to want to cut just to the bevel like that that way the velcro is only on the flat part not on the bevel part see yeah I know the wife's gonna kill me using uh, her kitchen cutting board but hey <clears throat> the risks we make for our hobbies, right? <laughs> yeah. And I'm just using a uh, box cutter blade to cut that down to size. Yeah, that's about right. I just trimmed my fingernails and it's making this harder peeling the back off of the eh, the velcro and a broken thumb doesn't help either there we go just above the screw holes right to the edge of the bevel and same with the other side Whew. hooey it's getting hot in here to its mate right above that screw hole and I'm going to use my trusty blade here to go right along that curved seam careful careful Careful. If you cut deep enough, the blade will go right into that little seam there and go right along the top. Nice and clean. Yeah. And now what you're going to want to do with the, the rough hook side is kind of eyeball 
how much you're going to want uh, to put on your pads. And it should be roughly about the same size, maybe a little bit more, so you can uh, adjust it to your liking. That's about right. And another strip. And I believe this is a two inch wide um, Velcro strips that I'm using here. And just a little more than that. Yeah, it's about right. And then, gotta stick those to the pads. So let's do that, shall we? All right. Yeah, remember our nice little teepees there? Yeah, this is where that comes into play. That's about right. And then just cut around where you're going to be sticking your Velcro strips. Don't have to cut very deep. It's paper thin after all. Paper is paper thin. Yeah, that makes sense. Thump, thump through the channels. Doesn't have to be totally exact. As long as you're close. There we go. And then just get your fingernail under there if you have them. Otherwise, you're gonna you have to use your the tip of your blade. There we go. Whammo bammo. Oh boy, this again. <laughs> yeah, taking the back off of highly adhesive Velcro strips. Oh joy, fun, fun for the whole family. Right. No, don't inflict your misery on your family. Come on now, that's not right. There we go. Whoa, whoa, very sticky, yeah. Don't let it get away from you like I just did. Hmm. Pick, 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 pick and peel. There we go. And you want to get as close to your mate as possible. Whammo bammo, that's pretty good. Yeah, I got a little bit of 
a little bit of uh, not perfection there, but who cares? As long as, you know, the majority of the back there isn't going to be covered in, you know, dirt, dust, grime, mud, blood, sweat, tears, what have you. That's all I need. <laughs> you can get rid of these now. <sighs> front, front. Set it gently down. You don't want it. Don't want the uh, Velcro totally stuck. Because we're not going to be here long. Maybe. Possibly. Probably. Get in here. There we go. Just enough to get the threads going. Get the threads going, just a few little twists there. And I want all the way down here and a slight diagonal to the other one. About there. And then go ahead and tighten down the screws all the way. Nice and tight. Now, about these screws, I did notice that I'm putting these on so that the screws are all the way down at the bottom of those um, openings, those slots. And uh, I wear a size 12, 12 and a half shoe. So if you got big feet, or if you wear riding shoes or boots that have like a thick sole or are, you know, thicker from the, from the pedal to the top of your foot, you might not even uh, be using these screws, you know. If you got a lot of, a lot of height to your foot, yeah, you might not even use both of these, you know. So, just depends on what you wear, when you ride, uh, how big your feet are, and all that. But luckily, mine just fit. Just fit. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. And there it is. And look at there, my pedals go all the way up. Amaze balls. All that's left is a couple of test rides to make sure I got the placement just so. And if not, I unscrew those, move this a little bit, and screw them back down. There you go. Hope that helps a little bit. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Um, I probably didn't even need to make this video, but, you know, that thing with uh, cutting around the, on the paper on the back, you know, I just thought I'd uh, go ahead and put that on video to so you can see uh, actually what people are talking about when they say, uh, you know, just cut around the uh, Velcro. Cut the paper. There you go. Now you've seen it. All right, guys. See you next time.